I want to make one thing clear. I did not, repeat not, ask for any of this. I did not ask to be promoted. I did not ask to be made overseer. And I certainly did not ask to be strapped down in this tin can body of a drop pod, hurtling down with three idiots screaming their lungs out inside me. The company promised me an A-team. The kind of people Joe Haldeman wrote about in The Forever War. Astrophysicists who could blow a man's head off at 500 meters. The best of the best. You know, the master chiefs and all that. The kind of people who go in, get shit done, leave a nice calling card, and live to strike a heroic pose. Did we get what it said on the label? Well, let's look around. Exhibit A. Simon Justin. Simon is my geologist. He's 35-ish, biological time, and looks like someone stuck eyeballs on a mop. They told me Simon would be reliable. He's good at everything to do with rocks and earthquakes. He scored well in the shooting sims. He can do CPR and basic medical aid and looks like your average nerd trying too hard to be cool. He'll make a fine crew member. But here's what they didn't tell me. Simon grew up on the brutal world of old New York. He was sold to a corporation as a child. They stuck a needle into the center of his brainstem and jacked him into a virtual fantasy world so they could broadcast his feed as reality TV. His entire childhood was spent being beaten up by gangs and digging holes in fake ground so nobody could hear him crying in the fake darkness. Except for the audience, of course. Who must have had a hoot, the sick bastards. Old New York had its times. After the Mercator Rissick Rebellion, the UN jumped in and did a number on them, including yanking out all those poor souls out of reality TV and setting them free. For some reason, I don't think this man ever really recovered. I'm not saying Simon is a bad person. I'm saying what doesn't kill you makes you stranger. I'm saying a traumatized reality TV slave star is the last person I want dropped into an unexplored planet on my first landing mission. Exhibit B. Anna Agrawal. Anna is an odd fish. She's got 20 years on Simon, but unlike Simon, Anna grew up with everything she ever wanted. I've checked her degree transcripts. They're through the roof. High social skills. And then, somewhere along the line, she decided to ditch everything and become an army doctor. Doesn't compute. You know why it doesn't compute? Because Anna Agrawal doesn't exist. I don't know who the hell this person is, but the real Anna Agarwal, as verified by her gene sample, died on the microplanet we were child. This imposter, let's call her fake Anna, showed up on Arjuna 3 and has been hopping planets ever since, always moving outwards. Deus Olympus. Boat murdered. Karthika Highway. This kind of stuff is real easy when delays between databases are measured in light years. Fake Anna picked up a gunshot wound somewhere on the way, left leg, and now she's on my mission on the very edge of human space. Right now she's cradling Simon as he screams, which, excuse me, Anna, is the stupidest fucking thing you can do while strapped inside a tin can plummeting through the atmosphere. Damn it, Anna, go back to your seat. Exhibit C. Milo Kalik. Finally, a sane choice. Milo, 37, is an inventor. He can shoot, yes, but also make stuff and argue Machiavelli and Chanaka by the fireside, master's degree in engineering from the Ort Academy. There are some irregularities. He's been demoted three times so far, each time by a woman commander. That's odd. And he's spent a weird amount of time in cryosleep. Almost three centuries. But right now, I don't have much to go on, so he's my golden boy. Look at him smile. He's enjoying this. He's enjoying being alive after all that time in the freezer. Don't let me down, Milo. Simon pukes all over him, all over me. Oh, gods. This isn't an A-team. This is a D-team with a paint shop. The real heroes are probably out somewhere in the inner rim discovering alien civilizations while looking heroic in their armor. Me? I get the backwater planet and the salvage job. Go dig up an old crash site, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Which brings us to myself. I'm the drop pod. Yeah, go ahead, laugh. I'm a 4.4 ton safety capsule hurtling through a sky the color of topaz. Inside, I'm a state-of-the-art computer equipped with weapons, seed stock, building materials, people, and of course, myself, to instruct the baselines how to do their job. In turn, the theory goes, the humans ask the right questions, make the right pseudo-random moves, 
nudge your thinking in all the right ways, ways that a machine can't. Humans evolved to survive, and they're fantastically good at it. The combination of myself and a human crew is supposed to make us better, faster, a little more chaotic, yes, but a lot more survivable. This is what happens when PCS thinks you're smart enough to be an overseer. You end up knee-deep in theory with Simon's puke all over your instrument panels. For fuck's sake, Anna, strap yourself in. It's going to be a bumpy ride.